I think there's two things about Asia that I think are very important. Number one is that Canada's position in a, in a, as a G8 country uh, has, in my view, uh, really been there for historical reasons and not necessarily because of our economic importance. And so I tell myself that over the long term, if we could have a very strong relationship with both China and the United States that we already have, obviously Canada's position is strengthened then on both an economic basis and on a, on a strategic geopolitical base. And so it, it, uh, the governments, I think, have done a good job in maintaining friendships over the years uh, between China and Canada. And over time, I really believe that the United States is a, is a country that was built on individuality and celebrates individuality. And China is a country that's been built really on collectivity. And so it's very hard for those two concepts to come together. And I think that Canada could be uniquely placed to play a role in bridging some of these cultural differences and gaps in the future. So I view the relationships uh, of Asia over the long term to be pivotal to our own importance w w in a global context, in addition to the economics obviously behind it. You know, Asia's success is our success because ultimately if Asia succeeds, the price of natural resources is going to go up and of course the price of oil. And for us, on a job creation basis, on a wealth basis, that is a fantastic opportunity. So yes, I do think we need to devote a lot of time to these relationships and I think we should continue to do what we've been doing in the past and accelerate it because the, the, the change is going to happen. And we're either going to be a part of it and benefit from it or we're going to lose. My view is, let's benefit, let's go.